What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Expansion Pack podcast, where we download this week's gaming news and we bring it straight to you. I'm your host, Denzel, aka Black Eyes, joined by my co host, starting in the middle. If you guys are watching on YouTube or Spotify, <laughs> with uh, Mr. Goopmaster Flex. What's going on, bro? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we gooping today, you know? It's simple. Keeping it, we keep it simple. simple. All right, I like that. I like that. And we got uh, my guy all the way down to the, the right end there, Mr. 525 himself, May 25th. What's going on, man? Hey, you know, same shit, different toilet. That's the slogan. Um, not as tired as I normally am, but regardless, still ready to talk about some damn games, y'all. All right. Talk about them. Good. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about some games. Let's talk about some games. Yeah, man. Um, we're we're, we're kind of light on topics, actually. But um, you know, definitely definitely got a couple things to talk about. You know, we're gonna get gonna get things started with the buffer. Chris, I'm gonna let you take it away. It's gonna be an interesting one this week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you like it. Yeah, quite interesting. So this week's buffer is um what is a villain or final boss from a video game that you would like to kind of see get their own little spin-off game in a sense, where you get to see that villain's come up story or their origin story or whatever you want to say. Kind of think of it in the way of like how they did the Joker movie. You know, I felt like the Joker movie really humanized the character and really kind of gave you an emotional tie to the character that a lot of people I don't think had before. So that level of things, you know, what's that video game that's like, yo, this would be kind of cool to try to understand why they're like this. Um, So, all right, I got to start off. I got an honorable mention and then I have um, one that I'm actually truly curious about. Um, Honorable mention would have to be uh, Sephiroth from uh, Final Fantasy. Because, like, yo, I'm going to keep it a stack. I, I don't fully understand his lore. I just know Holmes hella evil. And I'm like, yo, it'd be mad cool if they just came out with, like, a different style RPG that was more kind of, like, along the lines of Witcher and all those kind of games. And uh, just told his story. That would be mad dope. But my main answer... Y'all ready for this? I would love to see the origin story. And he's not really a villain or anything, but he kind of is a villain. My man Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> okay. Yo, if y'all played GTA 5, which I know majority of you guys have, home is fucked up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I would love to see how he got that way. Sure, there's a little bit of mental health going on, I'm sure. But that's people. that's not all mental health. That's that's a lot of trauma and a lot of other bullshit going on too. I'd love to just see what happened to that man's. What, what what's good with your family life? You know what I'm saying? What's good with your siblings? <laughs> like, are you okay, my boy? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. I'd love to see that. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, Travel. I feel man. There's got to be a certain point where. Uh... <laughs> A certain point that you that broke you, you know what I mean? You gotta, I guess, <laughs> yeah. find out the origin of that, you know. But uh, that, that's cool though, you know. I like that answer, Trevor and stuff. Uh, you know, my answers are kind of gonna be a little weird, not weird, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know Denzel's gonna like the first one, you know, obviously, Chris gave out, so I'm gonna give out my two that I kind of thought of with. So, my first <laughs> one, I would like, uh, give me a a game with Albert Rusker, you know what I mean? I knew you were going to say that. Oh. I knew oh. you were going to say that. That will be kind of fire, though. <laughs> from the beginning to five, where he gets blown in the head with RPG. Give me everything, the bits and pieces, the juiciest parts of the state. Because I like Wesker. Wesker's actually a fun villain, in my opinion. And yes. like, he just don't stay know, dead. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's under. I wouldn't call him underrated, but like, he's definitely like, you know, I don't want the rest of the evil villains, you know. I fucks with him a lot, you know? Like, he's probably the most memorable Resident Evil villain, in my opinion. Yeah, easily. easily. But, yeah, I would definitely love, like, a little origin story. And then, my second pick, I would have to go with uh, Metal Gear, uh, the boss, you know? Snake's mentor, and it's like, oh my goodness. I, like, this kind of, like, maybe, like, an origin story of how, you know, she trained him all the way up to the end where, you know, Snake kills your spoiler alert. I mean, the game's been out for 20 years, but, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's like everything that happened, why she betrayed everything, like, they explained it, of course, like, she 
she like did the double betray. Like she betrayed the U.S. to work with the other guys. Just but she's like actually working for the U.S. Just for so you know what I mean. Like I just want to see all that stuff. I I love Metal Gear, so like I would love to see like a little spinoff of the boss and that little origin story as well. I yeah. respect it. It's cool. It's cool. All right. Well, um, I really only have one, but since y'all, you know, th- threw the the, <laughs> the the doubles in here, I I had something that kind of so popped sorry. into so my sorry. head real quick. So my honorable mention, I don't think he actually ended up being the final boss. I won't go too deep into it to avoid spoilers and all that stuff, but it's not even that. It's not even I want to play as a specific character, but like Bioshock, you know, I've I've been pretty vocal on here that it's one of my favorite games, um, and I would love to just see the fall of Rapture. Like, like we, when you play Bioshock, <clears throat> Rapture is already fucked up. <laughs> like, there's yeah. just it's 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 all fucked up. It's just like, um, big daddies and and little sisters running around everywhere and yada yada yada. I know that's that's clip worthy. Anyways, um, <laughs> and it's just like everything's just like destroyed, right? It's like dystop- dystopian world, whatever. But at one point in time, <clears throat> Rapture was like a luscious, vibrant, living world, a, a utopia, really. And um, you know, like shit, some something went to shit all of a sudden. So I would love to see that like played out you know like in in bioshock they played out most of it in like audio clips and it's cool or whatever but you know i want to actually see with my own eyes and play it out you know like when rapture actually fell so that would be probably my my first one um second one though the main one i had in mind was oh my god it just slipped out of my head already um ah, damn it No, I th- this was the one that I had. And it's, oh, it, it just like slipped out of my head. Yeah, the ma- main one I had. Um, <laughs> oh my god, what game? Oh, God of War. Oh my god. So, God of War Ragnarok. I would love to play as Zeus, like an entire game. Not Zeus, sorry, Odin. <laughs> love to play an entire game as Odin. That would be cool. Like that would like, be far. They make a lot of reference to some of the shitty things that that Odin had done in his time. Um, Specifically to Freya, I believe. Yeah, was it Freya? Damn it, man! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like specifically some of the stuff that he did to Freya, and like some of the Valkyrie and yada yada yada. Like I would love to see that stuff like play out as opposed to being told after the fact. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So like, give me give me like a little DLC where I'm like, I'm the villain Odin. <laughs> <laughs> like, doing all the the shitty things that you know they said he did. Even to tear and shit like that. Shout out to tear. Yeah. Yeah, that would be dope. Good. I got to get on a new game plus that just dropped recently for that. Oh, yeah. And it's funny, like seeing people just go back to the game is like fucking up Thor in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, I want to. They're coming out with DLC for what's it called? Uh, Horizon, right? And oh, yeah. there's been a lot of conversation around like why anyone would actually care. Like I, I've I've heard a lot of discourse like around <laughs> like amongst PlayStation fans in particular being like, like I don't want this. I don't I don't care. You know, like Horizon hasn't hit that that note of like a, a Last of Us or God of War or whatever. And like the content that they've been putting out, like I guess the, some of the fans don't really necessarily care for. I want slash need a Ragnarok DLC of some sort. Like I want more of that mm-hmm. game. Um, more of like the core story of that game because there's a lot of quests like side quests you can do and i guess i'm not really motivated to go do it but um like a, a more focused single player story like i want to dive back into because that game is just fucking mm, fucking masterpiece Even that or like um miles morales type of you know content where it's like it's like a little bit longer than a regular dlc but like something that you know was definitely satisfying yeah, speaking of Miles Morales, man, I can't wait for Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two. So it's crazy that like you know there's all these rumors about it releasing in September, but we still haven't had anything crazy except for that showcase trailer like two years ago. Man. Yeah, yeah, there's something. Man. Actually, I think there's there's gonna be a state of play this week, but it's supposed to focus more on um, Final Fantasy. So, mm-hmm. 
We're probably like it's not going to be like anything that we probably want to watch. Yeah. Except for like, Final Fantasy, you know. If, yeah, I love that. Me personally, I'm not a Final Fantasy guy. Yeah, of course, I'm, especially I'm not yeah. too interested. If it if it hits after the fact, I'll probably pick it up and play it. But I'm not too interested. But from from the way it was described, it's only going to be Final Fantasy stuff. But I hope that they sneak like a little little something about Spider Man, so we get like a concrete date or even like a. Just something. Be like, hey, we're like, going to have a showcase this summer and like exactly. we'll dive more into it. Something like that, you know? Yeah. Just a little teaser. Yeah. Have a showcase date. Just give us that, man. Like, we're, we're dying for news. It's kind of dry out here, you know? It is dry out here, bro. The, <laughs> it is dry out here. The conversation we're about to have today is like the, the biggest news story of the day. Um, Actually, I mean, we'll just pivot right into it now. So, uh, <laughs> so I just kind of out of nowhere really um the twitter account for redfall had tweeted out uh verbatim so redfall is launching on xbox consoles with quality mode only xbox series x 4k 30 frames xbox series s 144p and 30 frames per second and that a 60 frames per second performance mode will be added via game update at a later date and the internet went crazy <laughs> <laughs> now there's, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of conversation a lot of discourse online about it um i think the vast majority of people are very annoyed by it whether you're an xbox fan or whatever like it's just oh it's hard it's hard to not be annoyed by it right like it's a it's a high quality triple a first party shooter being released in an incomplete state where you're only getting 30 frames per second it doesn't feel good, doesn't it? It's just, I don't know, it's not, it's not a good look. Like, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't necessarily matter if the game is good. Probably not. But it's just, we're so accustomed to, like, shooters in particular, you know, the 60 frames per second aspect of it and, like, having that available. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's just such a weird thing to be missing. And on top of that, in my personal opinion, you don't have to drop Redfall when you're dropping Redfall. Like, I don't know how long it's going to take for this 60 frames per second mode to come out, if it's going to take another month or two months or whatever. But why not just delay the game? Like, they already have um, this situation of, like, I think the game is supposed to be always online. And because of the backlash of it, they said, like, we're working on ways to figure out how to make it not always online. And supposedly, they'll be removing that requirement by the time the game releases. But you know, like you already have like that issue alone. And now you're talking about the 60 frames per second thing, not really coming yet. Like, why not just push the game back a a month? If it, if it is only going to take a month, why not just push it back a month? Like, I don't, I don't see the point, especially because I think what, um, so the game's coming out May 2nd. So that means the week prior you'll have Jedi survivor coming out, which is going to be a huge game, right? Like we, we talked about it, potentially game of the year worthy. And then when is Tears of the Kingdom come out? That's like two weeks later, a week later, something like that. So you're literally sandwiched between two really big games. You don't need to release at that time. Just push that shit, push that shit back. And I know, you know, we've 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 kind of gotten on Microsoft in the past about pushing games back and you know, different things like that, but it just feels like there's constantly like a it's just like constantly like an asterisk around any like exclusivity any big news that we're getting with xbox it's like there's like the good side and the bad side of it there's always like some negative portion that comes out afterwards right like like we were all excited about the starfield thing right and it's like they announced that we're going to get a starfield direct but then wrapped in that was like oh well we're getting a release date of september so that means the game really got pushed back again you know it's like it's always like little things like that and it you know i guess it's not that big of a deal but i feel like at some point you're giving Xbox and Phil Spencer and all these guys like enough leeway. It's like, where are we going to start to like hold them accountable for some of this like stupidity? It's just kind of annoying. And granted, it's not like it's a uniquely Xbox problem, right? PlayStation has its own set of issues with, with certain things that happen. Obviously Nintendo, we harp on all the time, but I don't know. It just feels like especially irritating with Xbox just because we had such a drought of exclusive games. Like last year, we didn't have any, major exclusives drop at all 
you know, and like, obviously we know that there's a lot of things that are being set up on the horizon. There's the Activision deal that's supposed to go through. Obviously there's a, there's a number of Bethesda games coming out. There's a number of other um, studios that have been acquired, whatever, what have you. But it's like, we're always constantly looking towards the future. And it's like, when we do get a little nugget, it's like, all right, like we're missing something. Like we're still waiting on when the hell we're going to see Hellblade, you know, like stupid shit like that. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get a little antsy. A little frustrated with mm-hmm. shit like this. Like it's like sixty frames a second. It's just like a. It should be the standard. Yeah, it, it, it should be. Man. It should be a standard for this generation and for this genre, right? Like, like that's the thing that really, in my opinion, that's like really we're speaking about at the end of the day here, right? Like this is a first person shooter. You, you kind of have to come out with a sixty frames a second. Like it's just it just doesn't make any sense to not have that anymore. Like what Death Loop came out on PlayStation with, I'm pretty sure, 60 frames by default. Obviously, they pushed, you know, it came out on, on uh, Xbox the year after that, has a 60 frames <laughs> mode. Like, I, I don't know, man. I, if you, You're yeah, a first-party yeah. studio at this point, right? You have exclusive access to yeah. the hardware. Why can't we get it to 60 frames already? Like, there's there's nothing... There's no reason to have this release date, like I said, right? Like, you're you're basically creating, like, an arbitrary release date. We don't need this game to drop at this time. It's not a Starfield. It's not a Halo. It's not, like, <clears throat> this big, massive system seller of a game. You know, it's, it's going to be an important game, but it doesn't... It's, like... I don't know. There's no deadline that you have to hit. Like it's if if anything, there's one that you just created for yourself internally. Like just push the game back a little bit, you know. And you knew that the the 60 frames per second mode wasn't going to be ready probably like back when we were having the the de- developer direct. You know, you could have set the release date to a little bit later then. I I don't know. I I'm ranting because I'm a little annoyed about <laughs> it. I want you guys' opinion about this because we're gonna. This this it, it it speaks to like a bigger problem, you know. It's like like I said, like there's more going on here than just the fact that it's this game releasing at sixty frames and not having sixty frames. So, yeah, Manny, I'll, I'll let you start off. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, like we talked about in the pre-show, it's like it is disappointing uh, for you know this generation, especially we're in, we're basically three years out. It'll be three years in November, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's three years, plenty of delays of games and stuff like that. You know, how how have we not figured it out? Uh, we had Gotham Knights previously that, like, kind of, you know, put the nail on their own coffin with their whole, you know, 4K 30 frames per second, trying to go all out just to come out with a poorly optimized game that kind of just, like, ran really buggy and sub-30. Like, it didn't even reach 30 most of the time. It was just, if you're 30, you're lucky, I guess. But, yeah, I feel like it just needs to stop. There's no reason for games to be... 30 frames per second, especially like for it to be like a solely only 30 per second mode. You can't tell me that like you can't just like download downgrade the resolution, I guess like 1440p for now and just give us like that 1440, 60. Like there's gotta be some kind of optimization that works well. I mean, when we look at optimization, we got games like God of War. Uh God of War optimized fairly well from you know 4K, even that game goes to 4K 120 and if you buy it on the PS4, like, you know, like it optimizes sub for the PS4 system. So how come we can't get that kind of like same optimization with a game like this that has plenty of time, plenty of delays or like a one delay maybe, but like still, you know, it's, it's annoying. And, you know, like thankfully I got, if it does, you know, come up in PC game pass, which I think it is, you know, thankfully I have a system that can handle it. Well, if it is optimized well, because even Gotham Knights wasn't fairly optimized for a PC, even running on like a 3080, 3090. So I just want to I just want to make a real quick point though. Gotham Knights is a bad game. Like it doesn't matter. Even if even if like it was optimized and they've like they've come a long way with like putting out updates and stuff like that. It's just a bad game. Like <laughs> not even an optimization issue. It's like when you get down into it, there's just not enough content there. Like it's just bad. But yeah, <clears throat> but I like I use them as an example because you know, like put the gameplay and stuff like that aside, the optimization was just that bad, you know, mm-hmm. like graphically, you know, performance wise and stuff like that. So yeah, just like I said, it's you know, it would be understandable if it was a game such as maybe um like a third person game such as The Last of Us. Like playing that on PS4 Pro 
4K 30 frames. I was fine with that. Well, it was probably 14, 43, 30. But, yeah, that game ran fairly well at 30 frames. Like, that game was a smooth experience, you know, for a 30 frames game. The problem with this game is a, it's a first-person shooter, and and it's probably not even going to be, like, a slow-paced first-person shooter. It's probably going to be, like, a lot of shit going on, and it's like, you know, it, 30 frames feels clunky for, like, a fast-paced game, and it's... It's probably not going to make the experience like initially a good one, you know, unless they somehow, you know, pull it off like the, you know, the bunny and the rat, bunny and the hat trick. But like, <laughs> you know, it's just, I just don't see this pinning out well for them. And I'm hoping that it's optimized well on PC game, like, you know, performance wise, because if it's one of those games where it's struggling to reach like 60 frames, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm I'm curious about something, right? <clears throat> Do you think it would make a difference if they just said, hey, the game's going to be at 30 frames per second. This is the experience that we're, we're giving you guys. If they didn't add the 60, or sorry, it's going to be at 30 frames per second. That's the experience we're giving you. And they didn't add the 60 frames is going to come later on down the road. Like, do you think that would have made a difference? Because in my eyes, <clears throat> you adding the 60 frames will be added at a later date feels like the game is incomplete. And that's where I think, <coughs> excuse me, that's where I think a lot of the issue comes with pe- with certain people is like, well, okay, so like you're still working on that mode, which means the game's not complete. Why not just delay it, you know? <clears throat> Whereas there are, there are certain styles of games where you can sit there and say, hey, this is the experience that we're creating. Like it's curated to be 4K30. And that's that's exactly what this is supposed to be. <clears throat> like at at the heart of it, Redfall is a story driven game, right? But because we're talking about first person shooter, we're talking about multiplayer, open world, you know, <clears throat> some of those um, terms leads you into the path of, well, like, OK, we're used to these types of games being 60 frames and there's a lot of shit going on. And there's this and there's that. But do you think it would have helped them a little bit? Chris, I'll, I'll go to you on this one. If they had just not said anything about the 60 frames coming down the pipe. Um, I think the blow wouldn't have been as, 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 you know, swift, but I do think they would have still took an L for that, for sure. Um, I don't know, man. For me, it's kind of just becoming a thing where it's, um, well, you know, like you said, Manny, we're going on three years since these consoles launched, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I guess just for me, it's a bigger issue than just Redfall itself. It's more just like, what the fuck's going on now? That's like still keeping so many things either getting pushed back or like they're just in the silence. Like they're not even saying anything about some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And like, so when I think about like a perfect dark, right? That shit, we haven't heard nothing about that in well, over a year, over a year and a half, maybe. Yeah. That's crazy. Like they should at least be saying something. And the thing that pisses everybody off is that we get dates, but then the dates are hella ambiguous, or they tell us some shit like, oh, it's gonna come at a future date. Remember when the Cyberpunk folks said that we're gonna get all this stuff in a future date? And then we got this dumbass fucking what was it called? A timeline, and everything took like two years to add to the game. Yeah. Like we don't want to hear a future date and then you do that. Like that's not gonna work. You know, and at some point we gotta start asking the question, like. Uh, this, this I don't even like asking this shit, but we gotta ask it now. You know, this is where this is the position that we're in. The bigger question: Are we in jeopardy of like this console cycle being almost like a a miss by default, just because of how shit is working out? You know what I mean? Because like I'm I'm even hearing things like they're already working on the PS5 and all this other bullshit. I mean, not the PS5, but uh, yes. the next one after and all yeah. that shit. Yeah, and like um. Like, if this keeps on going for, like, say if this happens for a whole other year and we still only get maybe one, two games happening, and even including with Sony, you know, when do we start to actually say, all right, we got to look at this. Like, this is just not what we thought it was going to be. Because I'll keep it a stack. I thought we would be in a different spot by now. Mm-hmm. I really, truly did. And and that's all around. I don't expect this from Nintendo, so I'm not even going to get on them with this. Yeah. But with Sony and, and, and Microsoft, you know, I really thought we would be further along and we gave everybody the most rope man we get that covid happened but like you say yo it's been three years that's a while you know some of this stuff oh go ahead i was gonna say 
I think, because I find myself going back and forth on this, right? I feel like the fact that it's not just one company, not just one platform, I think that speaks to how big of a deal this, this COVID shit was. Like, it really impacted the entire industry. And it's not just a, oh, well, Xbox doesn't necessarily have it all together. It's not just a, oh, PlayStation doesn't necessarily have it all together. It's everybody. Like, everybody's having issues. Like and, and this generation as a whole has seemed to have been hurt at some level as a result of it. I, I, I'm, I find myself struggling with that comment, though, because, you know, we were just talking about Unreal Engine and all the shit that's going on there, you know? Like, in mm. Unreal, they... They're hitting, bro. Like the shit that they're doing is pretty crazy. So it's not necessarily all doom and gloom for this generation. I think it's just that development cycles are fucked. They just are. It's just that simple. Like you, yeah. <clears throat> there's only so much um, that people could could have uh, done to get into the right groove. And I think that I don't. I think that obviously game development hurt. And uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't See, know when that pipeline comes back. I agree with everything you're saying. I just think that if that's the case, which we all know that is the case, then, you know, communication should have evolved in some way, shape or form within the last three years. So you know that was saying? actually the next thing I was going to ask you. So so before you finish that, so that was that's my next question is, is it at the point? Because I feel like Sony actually did a, a this, ah, there's pros and cons to each method, right? <laughs> Xbox has has leaned on the side of transparency right trying to be as transparent as they can be about certain things that are happening this being an an example 60 frames is coming down the road okay whatever you could just do the god of war thing and not say anything at all and we we thought the game was supposed to come out at this particular time it didn't come out at that time nobody said a word and then all of a sudden it you know like it didn't get delayed because they never had an official release date, but in our minds it got delayed because we had an expectation of it coming at this time and it came at a different time. But when it came, it was polished. It was ready to go. There weren't bugs. There weren't this. There weren't that. So is it a presentation issue on Xbox's side where it's like, let's just not say anything like, hey, and they're kind of doing it with like Perfect Dark and some of these other games, right? And I like it. it's like that Catch-22 of, is it better to just say, hey, we're coming out with this game. We'll give it to you when it's ready. And then just not say anything at all until we're actually ready to show you something that's done, that's baked. And then we'll say, all right, it's dropping for you in, in three months or it's, drop, it's shadow dropping or whatever the hell it happens to be. It, like maybe that's actually the better play at the end of the day, even though people are still going to be mad and say, oh, we haven't heard anything from Xbox in a while. We haven't heard anything from PlayStation in a while. It's like, well, yeah, sure, you haven't heard anything because we're afraid to piss you off <laughs> <laughs> to the point where we do have something, but like we can't exactly pinpoint exactly what date, you know, and then obviously shit happens and we have to push it now. And now you're mad. It's like we're, we're better off just not saying anything at all, waiting until everything fully baked and then dropping it on you. So I, I don't know. What do yeah, you think? I feel, man, it's like, all these false, false promises and false hopes that especially Microsoft has been giving us the last couple of years, it has been annoying, though. You know, like, we had, I would say, a fairly disappointing 2022, and really the only thing Microsoft had really to offer is Game Pass and, like, first-party titles from different games, you know? So I'll give that Microsoft has definitely given us a better service in the sense of, you know, you pay for a subscription and you get these games day one mostly, and it's, like, it's a cool service, of course. But, you know, when it comes to, like, exclusives and like you know putting out these triple a games for your brand so that people be like oh maybe i should get an xbox for the you know for this game of course and stuff like that's like i feel like that aspect has been very disappointing you know even like with these last couple delays with um you know uh i can't think of the name starfield but, um, starfield yeah i don't know why i can't think of that but yeah with starfield of course you know like it's, of course you want the game to come out and everything like that, but like don't just say coming out this date and then a year later mm-hmm. it's all oh, it's not coming out this day, it's gonna come out six months later and then a couple months after, or like six later six months later come out and then it's like another six months. It's just like yeah, it's like at this point, like I said, just don't say anything at all. Just show a trailer and be like it's when it's ready, it's ready. 
But the flip or side just, is, but the, sorry, that's good. Up. The flip side is, we complaining at Sony for not showing us nothing. So we'll just end up doing the same thing to Xbox. Like you know, like it's like, damn, like like I'm I'm with you on either side of that equation. But when you like, if I'm an exec, you know, like if I'm an executive and I'm looking down at all of this, and I'm like, damn, you're damned if you do or damned if you don't. Yeah. Well, I like. I, you know, where it's so this defense is like they don't say anything, but when it's ready, it's ready. They show it, and it's like, okay, we're expecting it to come out this day. We're not going to get any last minute delays. We're not going to get any like surprises like we have been with Microsoft. Like, but Microsoft people are like, complaining when you're not hearing anything. So it's like, it's true. Which, which is better? Is it better to be as transparent as you can be? And then you have, you have a couple stumbles along the way, or is it better to just do radio silence? And then when you drop something, you know, whatever you you, you get you get yeah. one game every year and a half. It seems like I'm gonna get PlayStation to pass this time, <laughs> just because of the whole lawsuit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like though it's like we we just playing that PlayStation, but we have nothing to be disappointed at because like we're probably gonna get Spider Man in the end. We may not have gotten like anything else besides Spider Man, but. At least we got something coming out that like hasn't been like delayed or anything like that. That's probably going to be consistent. And then it's like maybe when this whole lawsuit settles, PlayStation comes out with a banging showcase and just throws out a bunch of banging exclusives that are like probably ready to come out. Because I feel like at least when it comes to the PlayStation aspect, like I think they're more like ahead of Microsoft when it comes to like games that are ready to be pushed out at this point. Because I like. You know, like we talk about Perfect Dark, Hellblade, but you know, um, you know, even with Starfield and stuff like that, it's like we've been hearing about this. We've seen a lot of stuff from it, but like at this point, it's more becoming like wet dreams instead of reality. And it's like, you know, at this point, yeah. probably better not showing it at all until it is something. You know, like like Chris said, the last thing we heard from Perfect Dark was a year, year and a half ago, and it was like, you know, the news of it being in a de- development of uh, hell, you know what I mean? So, but like, see, okay, so see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The last thing we heard from Perfect Dark was a report that was like not official information at all. They didn't say anything about Perfect Dark, but we're still here complaining about Perfect Dark. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's like we're, we're mad but about, like- but they, but no, no, but hold up, but they didn't say anything, right? They're, they're doing the thing that we're saying they're supposed to do, which is not say a word. And then drop some shit when it's ready. Literally exactly what they're doing in Perfect Dark. But we're but we're mad. Like you see, like it's there is no so, win. <laughs> what the part the problem is Perfect Dark was announced. It had its little trailer. But they never Everybody had a release date. Ex- but they never had a release they, date. They they didn't have a release date, but if you guys remember. In that big ass showcase with all those trailers, they did say everything we are showing in this in this showcase is either being worked on for like what did they say? Something like for this year or for next year or uh, something? Yeah, like that? That, was, that was that was E three. That wasn't when they showed up Perfect Dark. That was E three. Perfect. Okay. No, Perfect Dark was actually a game awards when they like yep. showcased like all the. Oh like, yeah, you're right. Yep. So, that's how long ago it fucking was. I don't even remember. I'll give for that. But like they E three when they said that, like they fucking still didn't go with that. Yeah, because you know Star Starfield was in there and it what, it didn't yeah. come out that year after. None of that yeah. stuff happened. Forza, we didn't even fucking know what Force is coming out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. You're right. But again, so outside outside of that thing though, outside of the like, oh, everything's coming within X amount of time, um, like for like Forza, they didn't say they were just like it's coming this year. They didn't give a hard date because probably because they want to avoid shit like that. you know, like it's just like where is the sweet spot on this? Because Perfect Dark, we're we're sitting here saying like, well, we haven't heard anything from Perfect Dark. We're saying we haven't heard anything from Hellblade. But if we if they give a release date and then some shit happens, we're gonna be having this conversation. Like it's just so it's yeah. such a but tough like, spot. Okay, maybe Perfect Dark will give we'll slide on Perfect Dark because like yeah they they showcase that little trailer like okay it's happening that's it. But Hellblade they showed too much for at this point for us to be that like that was the first thing they showed, bro. <laughs> that was <laughs> like, like oh first like, game come on. on five and then it's like a year or two later two year I think it was two years later oh here's <laughs> gameplay of it. Fucking, we see the gameplay and like, yo, this shit looks nice, but like, where the fuck is it? It's been in development for like how long? And we, you know, we've seen gameplay, we just don't have anything. I feel like Hellblade is like 
an example. Like I can say that like they show too much and we still have nothing for it. You know what I mean? Like what is it called? But um, but they made you know, no promises. They made no promises about release dates. So is it is it that we're saying just don't show anything at all? Yeah, yeah, because because they hype it as though it's on its way, and that's the thing I think that kind of throws people off. Mm-hmm. Granted, there is a little bit of expectation setting that we do that we yeah, gotta take responsibility say, for. Yeah, that's not fair. That's that, that does yeah, happen. Yeah, that happen. Yeah, that does yeah. happen. But they do hype the shit sometimes too, and then it's just like, what's what's good, you know? So another question I was gonna ask you guys actually too was like, between some of the other. Uh, console generation shifting over mm-hmm. it always felt like there was like a jump like we, we moved a huge foot forward every single time we got a new set of consoles this is the first time for me and again maybe my change it feels like it's a 1.5 scenario that we're in right now and just not like a two like because I, I don't know maybe i was expecting far too much I, I don't know but i thought these things were gonna like or some of the games we were gonna get or some of the positions we would be in right now was gonna like leave me speechless in some cases and i truly believe that after seeing the showcases like the ones we saw so it's just like damn man we got all this stuff coming cool no <clears throat> we don't <laughs> let me re- let me let me rephrase this for you. let me rephrase your own question for you or like add a little sprinkle to it right yeah Last generation was the first time we ever got a mid-generation refresh in the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox Series X. Or, sorry, Xbox One X. Do you think that's part of the problem uh, as far as, like, a, a generational leap? Because if you if you just look at Xbox One and PlayStation 4 to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, there's a massive leap. Mm-hmm. Massive yeah. leap. So, I don't know. It's a, it's I didn't consider that. That's definitely something it's that you have like, to throw in there. Yeah, for sure. I feel like this generation, we should not, like, as much as, you know, I guess more power is good and all, I do not want to see, like, a pro whatever. We just got past the whole fucking, you know, limited stock stuff. You know what I mean? I'd be like, really we just got, we just got past it. And, like, just yeah. to see, like, a pro console come out maybe this year. I mean, we've been hearing a lot of rumors of a PlayStation new model. Like, it could be a slim. It could be the PS5 Pro. I don't want to see it because, like, we still really haven't even tapped the full potential of these consoles. Either that right. or these consoles are just so weak that it can't be tapped, you know? I would be pissed, bro. I'm not going to hold you. I, don't think, I definitely don't think it's more. a matter of being weak because if you look right. at if you look at a lot of, like, some of the, the PC games and, and the PC parts that share the same architecture, like, they're pushing, you know, some of the, some of the PC-only games are pushing some insane levels of graphics and, and just general capabilities. I think there's a lot of stuff that's untapped. And every time I look at the fucking UE5 stuff, it's I, I it's there. It's not a matter of, like, this generation can't do it. It's it's there. I think, mm-hmm. if anything, some of the, the development struggles that we've all talked about may actually extend the generation out to be a little bit longer. Um, or may, Or maybe maybe the fact that this COVID stuff happened might push us to not have the 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 pro or the mid-gen refresh type of stuff happening mm-hmm. anymore. You know, we just skip that entirely and then we get the, the next generation of systems, I don't know, let's say five years from now, four or five years from now. Mm-hmm. That can make a little bit of sense to me, but I don't know. I, like, as much as it sucks to be used as an excuse, like it's, it's really hard to underestimate or understate. We cannot understate how much COVID has impacted our world. And that's not just from a gaming standpoint. Like even we're still dealing with the like the repercussions of a lot of the shit that's going on, supposedly why we have an inflation and all, all this other <clears> stuff, <throat> you know, yeah. like COVID mattered. Like it really, it really hit us hard in a lot of different ways that we probably will never really be able to um, like interpret, I guess. But it still sucks. Like I, I, I get it. Like all these, these little things that we have going on with games and development, hell and yada, yada, yada. It's still annoying. I, I do think there's a presentation issue at hand and I don't know what, like, <laughs> it's just, I, I really think it's just impossible to figure out how to handle it. Cause personally, I don't want situations where I don't like, I, I like seeing Hellblade more. I, I really do. Like, even though it sucks that we don't have a release date, I would rather see the game like in the, the stages that they're they're showing it out at than to just have it completely radio silent. Like, I don't like that. Now, on the other side of that, 
I don't want release dates attached to anything. So if they could just show us stuff and be like, you know, well, we hey, we just wanted to show you what we're working on. It'll be, you know, we'll release it when it's ready. I'm okay with that. I just don't like the I don't like the release dates being given and then them feeling like they have to stick to the release dates and then we're missing content. That shit is that shit is worse, so much worse to me. Like with Redfall here, like just just delay the game. It's just so much simpler to just delay the game than to sit there and tell us, oh, there's no 60 frames per second mode at launch, but it's coming down the road. Either make a make a decision to say, hey, we're going to release this 30 frames. Make a decision to say, hey, we're going to delay this until we get to 60 frames. Like whatever is that you have to do, but like this like teetering bullshit, like I don't I don't like it, and I understand the this you know being transparent about it and all that stuff, but I think there's a way to be transparent and also like respect your consumer, and say we're just gonna push the game back and you know give it to you when you're ready. Like there's there are enough things coming right. Like there's enough games on the platform for people to to digest. Like. I think uh, what Dead Island is coming in, in a similar time frame to around when Redfall is coming out. Obviously, we talked about Jedi Survivor. We're talking specifically Xbox too, right? And, you know, like we saw, we talked about before. Like, there's other game. There's um, uh, Tears of the Kingdom coming out on Switch, and they may not factor that in because you know they're worried about their own gamers, not necessarily people who are going off to play on Switch. But either way, just I don't know, just be more responsible <laughs> in my <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Like yeah. I guess the times when we were we're getting news and like they say the game's coming out at the end of the year and it came out at the end of the year and it was you know like fully with everything and all that stuff man like that time is gone I feel like and now we're just like we haven't had that in years yeah. <laughs> we haven't yeah. had that in yeah. years in a minute because once yeah. once people figured out they could <laughs> mitigate some of the bullshit by having mm-hmm. updates that push out later on it was exactly. it's a different world you know. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't mind the news and the gameplay, but I don't know. Like, after just seeing, like, Hellblade and stuff like that, we were just seeing so much news with, like, Hellblade, and it's like, we still know nothing, really. Like, not nothing in the sense of just, like, gameplay. We probably, like, you know, we see gameplay. We know how the game works and stuff like that. We just don't know really state. You know, like, this teasing is a little... Out of hand, I'm like it's also. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, I, I just think it hurts more just because it would be one thing, say, like for example, we keep using Hellblade. If Hellblade was getting the treatment that it's getting now, and it was like you know this whole trip fee tease thing that they got going on, it's not that that's bad. It's the idea that almost all the games that they had in that showcase years ago are still not out yet. Like, and it, and they don't have anything to kind of like. They, you know what it is? Here's the really, really real problem. I don't know if you guys will agree with me. I think this wouldn't even be as much of an issue if Halo had not flopped. I think if Halo had did what it was supposed to do, we wouldn't even have some of these discussions. Hmm. But because Halo did not hit that mark, it's almost as though we've gone two, three years on Microsoft's end with like no major... Because we've had no Gears released, right? It just, it has, that hasn't happened with the Series X yet. And some of the other heavy hitter names for, for Microsoft simply just have not released a new game since the Series X has been a thing. So you go all these years, and this is like, I, you know, I get the COVID thing, I get all that stuff, but it's not going to, like, not make it hurt any less, you know? It's kind of just like, damn, y'all need something. Damn, mm-hmm. y'all. At least one hitter. You're, one. Not, you're not fucking with Horizon? I'm, well, Horizon's Sony, though. That's that's not on... No, no, Forza Horizon. Oh, oh. Man. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Forza is good. Forza is good. You're not fucking with High Five Rush? Again, it, it, that's not that's not like a super big mover, needle mover, though. So Forza kind of is, but it, it didn't do it for very long. I'm talking I'm about talking something that's it. like a, a God of War. Yeah, I know. Like, that's where Sony is kind of killing them a little bit because God of War comes out and it does what it does. Fucking they had Ratchet and Clank. You know, even though people are talking shit about Horizon, it had come out and it's 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 about to get a DLC. Mm-hmm. You know, it, that's where we're fucking up with Microsoft. They got to at least keep some of these dates somewhere like one of these games somewhere I, if if hellblade not, not hellblade i'm sorry um starfield and redfall get into some kind of bullshit trouble within this year and that shit gets pushed back in the next year it's gonna look horrible and i think that's one of the reasons why they've opted to do this whole 
you know what, let's just put it out with the 30 FPS and see what happens later. Because they know it's going to look bad. If this shit got pushed back again, even though I kind of agree with your stance on pushing it back. I, I honestly don't think, uh, I don't think any, I don't think we're having a conversation if Redfall gets pushed back. I really don't. Redfall's not that, like, it's not, it's important, but it's not like Starfield, God of War, hey, it's not on that level. I just think they need something, man. They don't got nothing right now. That's the thing I think that's hurting them. They need something. Something has to give on Microsoft's end. And it, it looks like they acquired on the studios. What happened to fucking Avowed? Where is that? Where? Where? But where, see, where is, uh, see this, like, just, this is what I'm talking about, though. You can't, you can't ask them to not like i don't know it's just but such a it's they were such a, all in the same showcase so but, they, like, but that's fuck? not a showcase where they said oh it's coming in a year like they just say here these are the games that are coming oh, no, i know that but i'm just still harping <laughs> on the fact that this shit was almost two years ago you know what i'm saying and we're still in the same boat damn near and i'm like dude come on something something i know, like, I you, know. Gotta, you gotta have something man like yeah. jesus christ i just man. i think I think if they do the the other thing where they don't show anything at all, I think they get they get hammered more. I think yeah, they get they, they're, they're gonna get shit either way for sure. I guess I'm just trying to figure out what the lesser of the two evils is here. And I think the lesser of the two evils is to just be transparent. It's just it's just so much better to be transparent. But here's the thing: it's like it's not that they're not communicating because they are, but the transparency is off because it doesn't add up to the results that we get later. So, like for example, they're gonna say some shit like, "Oh, everything in this thing is gonna be released in this time frame," and that's technically being transparent. But then later on, we get to the time frame and it didn't happen. So then it's like you're being you're you're communicating. You're definitely trying to keep you know the shit open. I hear you. But, you, like, you got to keep what you're saying because then at the end of the day, the congruency ain't there. And but you know, but there's the thing about transparency. It's not. It's not a matter of transparency. Doesn't equate to consistency, right? If you're being transparent, you believe that the game is coming out within this time frame. You tell people you believe the game's coming out in the time frame. If something happens and it's not at the quality that you needed to be at, part of transparency is saying the game is not where we need it to be. We have to push it back, right? Part of transparency is. Uh, this game is coming out at 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second is coming out a later date. Transparency doesn't look good all the time. And that's the thing. That's that's where it's like, this is tricky. Like you can either just go wall garden, nobody hearing it, like radio silence, or you can be transparent and transparency is ugly, but at least you're getting something. And like at the end of the day, the, the ideal situation is Xbox comes out with these games on a prop, proper release cadence. Everybody's fucking happy. <clears throat> and that's obviously what I want. But <clears throat> if we're getting down to the realistic nature of it, like I would prefer them be transparent. And if they hit bumps in the road, just say we hit a bump in the road. Like it's it sucks. And I'm not saying like I'm ex- there's no excuse for it. Right. There's absolutely no excuse for it. But if we're talking about not saying anything and letting these problems continue to to kick down the road and not, you know, us not hearing anything for you know, whatever time frame until the game comes out versus like them telling us, you know, this is where we're at, whatever. I'd rather them just tell us where they're at, even if it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> and yeah, I feel like Microsoft just got us, you know, show these stuff because I guess essentially they are second place in the market. But that is, that's a huge part. That's a huge part of it too. Yeah. yeah Sony yeah. doesn't like, like Sony's, you know, first place, like they can go in silence and get away with it just because they're, I guess yeah. known for it, you know what I mean? They're like they're known for putting out bangers and stuff like that. Whereas like Microsoft's like they're playing catchers. So I can I can understand that aspect, but yeah. as long as they're real, like Denzel said, you know, just let us know. Well, I'm just like, asking for one, just one thing. <laughs> just, just one. Come on. <laughs> I think oh. I think things are definitely compounded by the gap year, right? Because we had we had Forza and Halo like back to back right those are those were and when halo came out it was lauded like it wasn't like that's the other side of this it wasn't like halo dropped and it was bad that's not the case it was actually a great game and it is still a great game the problem is the 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 like after the fact content like the story was great people were giving it you know high scores and stuff like that so it's like i don't know there's always like a a matter of perspective with this shit that gets a little crazy but it's like we had a we had a gap in a year that was it just a year gap and like, it's, I don't know, it's doom and gloom. It's still, it's not great. I don't like seeing this stuff, 
Yeah. But the but the narrative is sometimes it's just like this is way you know, you know like internet makes everything like maybe way worse than it actually is. But just like we're we're a year off, and they started off pretty strong in the year with like I still think High Fire Rush is a great game. A lot of people like I think it's better than most of the games that have come out this year, and most of the games that have come out this generation really. But mm-hmm. that's you know whatever that's a different conversation for a different time. But there's that, and then you know. Like, I guess Redfall is supposed to be the next big thing. We'll see what happens with it. I think at the end of the day, I would love to have this conversation again in a, in a year if Starfield actually comes out and is what it's supposed to be. Like, I, is that the one game that changes this narrative? Like, it's an opportunity. It's just crazy. Like, <laughs> one game, just like. <laughs> like, literally, that's all they kind of need right now. Because, again, it's all, it's almost like they sold some of these the consoles on on the the idea that we were going to get these crazy games so like they gotta give us one of them on the side that like it's you know you, you have to yeah at some point you know so that's why i'm just like i'm not saying that these are bad consoles they're not waste or anything like that i just need them to like cash in on this idea that we moved forward mm-hmm. and we i don't i don't feel like we got there yet mm-hmm. yeah i mean like, i still think we've had banger games just not banger first party games like I thought yeah. there's been plenty of really great games that have come out. So I don't know. That's, that's a different argument for a different time, but I, yeah. I don't think, I don't think this generation is a waste. I think if you're looking at it from the standpoint of first party, it definitely couldn't be improved. But if you're looking at it from like in totality, you know, the Elden Rings of the world and yada, 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 like, they, I mean, there's some big, yeah, no, big, for sure. big time for sure. games that have come out. So. For sure. Mm. Yeah. I just I just want Microsoft to be able to sit at the table and not be fucked with because at this point it's like literally it's more fuel for people to just be like, what are y'all doing over there? This is why y'all should have got PS5 because Sony at least, you know what I'm saying? Like all those arguments, they had a chance to, to like squall and they're mm. still here. Yeah. <laughs> I still, you know what I mean? I still, like, God damn. I still feel like, like God of War is the only win for this generation. So I still feel like it's a weird like take because yeah. it's like, it's the only win. Like Miles Morales it, was it, cool, it, but like Miles Morales it is. was. It was like a DLC. Yeah, it was a DLC. Like, like DLC. and it was on both both consoles. Like Horizon not doing much. Like I know you like Ratchet and Clank, but like it was okay. Like God was the only win they've really had in my eyes, and I don't know. See, like God of War, though, like when you think about it. Y'all would say that it's good enough to like sell somebody on the idea of just buying a PS5 alone oh, yeah. just to be able to play that, right? 100%, 100%. That, that, that's that's what I'm saying though. Like they need something like that in, in, in Microsoft's end, you know, because I don't think they have that right now. I think so, I think there's their their um their pitch now, and it's I mean it works obviously because they've they've been selling more systems yeah. than ever, is the game pass side of things, right? And I get yeah, yeah. I get that, that only goes so far for some people in certain situations, but <clears throat> when you really look at the value proposition and be able to play all these different games and having a lot of stuff that's just coming out day and date, I think that's that's the system seller right now. And then you then you lean even further into the idea that like, oh, okay, well, whenever Redfall does come, whenever Starfield does, and that's the, that's the part of why I feel like they don't need to be so hard about certain release dates because it's like if you have Game Pass, you're gonna have the game, you know. Mm-hmm. And if you yeah. if you can drive that idea home, <laughs> like. I think it helps from a from a system selling standpoint. So, I don't know. I'm, it's a fascinating conversation for sure because I I do think that there's a lot of um, <sighs> finessing that Xbox needs to do around the way they present things. I think that the transparency is key, but I think you have to find some way to fit in between those things. Like I think you can show off. I, I think if they took the Hellblade approach to more games and just kept showing you stuff and kept showing you stuff, but they didn't actually give you a release date until they were like really confident that the game was like fully baked. I think that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. But yeah, there's so many other thoughts that pop in my head. I don't want to go too much (laughs) into another rant about it because I think it's probably a good place for us to wrap it up. But do you guys have any other closing thoughts? Man, the red fall better not flop. That's my final thoughts, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I tell you what, n- nobody's going to accept that game if it comes out 30 FPS and it got other bugs. Bruv, this better be the only fucking problem with the game. I'm telling you that shit yeah. right now. Sure. Or, or at least at right the... Now. I, I feel like bugs are still excusable, and I'm, I hate saying that, but I still I feel like bugs I mean, are still excusable. Bugs. You, you know what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Game breakers. Yeah, I get you. 
Yeah. But like, I just need the game to be fun and good. That's really mm-hmm. it. Exactly. That's really it for me at the end of the day. So as long as it's it's yeah. fun and it's it's a good game and I can play it, you know, with my friends and do like some of the the co op stuff that they're trying to do, like, I'm happy because I'm not looking for this to be the Halo, the system seller, you know, that type of shit. So, mm-hmm. uh. yeah, this is that like game. It's like okay, we bought this company now, store so a title like hold people over for the the big meal. You know what I mean, like an appetizer. So right, that's yeah. how- like hold us over for when Starfield hits, and Starfield is supposed to be that like megaton hit, like mm-hmm. that thing that we're supposed to talk about for you know the next couple of years or whatever. So, uh, we'll see how it goes down, but. Yeah. Again, like I said, it's probably a good place for us to end it now. Um, thank you guys who are watching on the YouTube and uh, and you know the other platforms, or you know for those of y'all who are listening as well. Thank you. We will check you guys out next time. Um, make sure to check us out on our social media pages as well. So if you're on uh, Twitter, make sure to check us out at XPack Pod. Instagram also at XPack Pod, and then also you can search us up on TikTok at Expansion Pack Podcast with an X. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching and listening. We will check you guys out next time. Peace. Bye. Yeah.